This is the oldest pair of jeans in the world. If you look at it from the front, it doesn't it look like just a really cool finished pair of jeans you could wear today? That's what I love about these, is you could walk down the street in this pair of jeans today, no one would know that they're 135 years old. Mm. But if you walk down the street wearing men's clothing from 1879, people would say, where is the costume party? Let's spend the night with friends and go wherever. Spend a day sitting tracks on whatever. And you're always home, sick and out. I'm always at home when you call. It's like I never went nowhere at all. How many pairs of jeans have you come across today? In the subway, at school, in the street, in restaurants, movie theaters, or at work? It's impossible to say. It's said there are up to seven pairs of jeans per person in the world. The U.S. produces about 450 million of them a year. And you're bound to have at least one pair of your own in your closet. A veritable craze has swept our planet, our faded blue planet. Jeans were born in the 19th century and are now striding into a new millennium with undying insolence. They are manufactured cheaply in third world factories to flood the markets in developed countries. Having once symbolized industrialization, they have now become a reflection of globalization and the entire world economy fits neatly into their five pockets. Yet jeans are a mass of defects. They sag after a while, they fade, the legs twist around, the seams fray, and they bag at the knees. And in spite of all that, they embody modernity, comfort, and strength. They are worn by children, parents, and grandparents. And whether you're a star or just an average Joe, a king or a beggar, a pauper or all-powerful, slender or shapeless, you've all got your own jeans. Which can't be said for any other item of clothing. So perhaps the real question is, why jeans? Every morning when you get dressed, you think, I can't wear jeans again. Yes. Why jeans? Why such a success story? Well, first things first. When were jeans born? Let's take a trip back in time. It started off like all good old westerns. At the end of the dusty road that stretched from San Francisco to the Arizona border. The year is 1873. For 20 years already, the Levi Strauss Company, founded by a German Jewish immigrant, had been supplying the general stores of the American West where cowboys and miners bought their supplies. Levi Strauss was a wholesaler and sold everything from shovels, picks, lanterns, pots and pans and knives to shoes, long johns, shirts and dungarees. The dungarees were usually made out of blue canvas, denim. He thought he would spend the rest of his life being a dry goods wholesaler. But then one day in 1872, he got a letter from a man named Jacob Davis. Dear Mr. Levi Strauss, Today one of my female clients came into my shop complaining that the areas around the pockets on your dungarees are not sturdy enough. The pockets her gold digger husband uses to keep his tools in. At that precise moment, I was attaching leather straps onto horse blankets using small copper rivets, which gave me an idea. So he wanted to patent his process so no one would steal it, but he needed a business partner. So however it happened, Levi and Jacob Davis got the first U.S. patent to make blue jeans in May of 1873. With the weak points in the pockets of denim work trousers now reinforced with copper rivets, the jean had just been born. And this was incredibly important because men who bought jeans were laborers, workers. So because these pants lasted 